Hello, I'm Dr. Gary Gould, and in this tutorial, we are going to look at advanced lighting techniques. So in other tutorials, I talked about some basic introductory things, and you should watch that and make sure you understand the basics. But in this video, we're going to show you how lighting can improve your production immediately and also helps to create some mood. So in this tutorial, we're going to cover how lighting sets a mood. We're going to look at the concept of modeled lighting, and we're going to look at how to use shadows and bounce lighting more effectively. Lighting is an important part of the story that we're telling because it creates mood. Think about how lighting affects your mood in real life. A sunny day has a much different feel than an overcast day. When you walk into a room that's lit by fluorescent lighting, it has a very different feel from one that's lit by candlelight. In the same way, professionals use lighting to create mood in their productions. And you're going to do the same things when you're shooting with your stuff. The one thing you have to decide is what's the mood I want to create and how am I going to do that? I talk about hard direct lighting in that other video. That's a very dramatic look. Now you can light your interviews like that, or you can use a softer, gentler look. Both are correct. The one thing that you need to be aware of, though, is when we're shooting documentary work especially, you want things to be objective. You want the lighting to be consistent between interviews. So if you pick a nice soft look for one person, you need to use it for everybody. You can, of course, use dramatic lightings for recreation and other things throughout the documentary. But when it comes time to doing the interviews, please make sure that they actually look similar in terms of the way you lit them. So you want to try to be able to recreate your lighting, uh, and that's something to remember when you're shooting your production. Interviews are a critical part of any production. And so when you're shooting them, you want to make sure that they are fabulous. There are often things you can't redo or go back and get again. If you shoot a scene wrong, you get some bad traffic shots, you can go back and get that again. But interviews are not like that, so you want to make sure you get it right the first time. And you also want to make sure that, that you set the lighting up in such a way that it looks really great. Professionals use a, techniques, a technique called three-point lighting, which means we're going to use three different lights around the person to create a beautiful modeled look. The main light that we use is called the key light. The main light, it can be a window light, it can be a professional lighting fixture, it can be a desk lamp, but whatever is your primary light source is called your key light. Where you place it is usually determined by the background. Which way, which angle, which side is the light going to hit the background? So in this particular setup, my key light is off to the left side of the camera because the light is going to cut across me and fall into the room this way. If I put the key light on the right side of the camera, it would cut across this way and fall onto this wall, which is quite light, and it will light it up. And remember, the brightest thing in the screen is what you want the audience to be looking at. And in this case, it's my face. So I want the background to be darker. And so that's why I've set my key, key light up where I did. If I'm using a window light, I may have no choice. The key main light is going to create shadows on the one side of the person's face. And I'm going to use a fill light to fill in those shadows. Now, Remember, the job of the fill light is not to create even lighting on the face. You want some shadows on one side of the face to create some depth in the shot. And so what the fill is going to do, it's going to be not as intense as the primary or key light, but it's going to fill in those shadows. One of the things that works really well is a piece of white foam board that you can pick up at most dollar stores. You can use that to reflect the primary or the key light onto the other side of the person's face, and you can use it to fill in the shadows. Look at how effectively this does that. And it cost me all of $1.25 for the white board. Remember, too, you do not want to have flat, even lighting across a person's face. You want some shadows on the nose, some shadows on the eyes, because it creates a nice modeled look, and it creates a nice depth to the person's face. Now, the third light that we use is called the backlight. And what that light does is it helps to separate the person from the background. So we're going to place it behind them. The front lighting I've got set up, in this case, as a nice soft light. But the backlight should be a direct, straight-on light. And I'm going to show you here what I'm using. If you look, it's just a lamp I got from Ikea for $20 and a, a nice, warm light bulb, thir uh, about 3,200 degrees Kelvin light bulb. And I just aim that at the back of my head, and it works fine. As a side note, see that beautiful chair over there? One of the important things when you're doing lighting is to make sure that the chair is not in the shot if you can avoid it. So I picked a low back chair here. It's just a folding chair that I had the myself sit on. But if I was going to sit on that comfortable rocking chair, first of all, I'm going to rock the whole time. Second of all, it's a very high back, so it would come into the shot. So when you're setting people up, too, shadows are good on the face, 
but they're not great on the wall. So never put somebody right up against the wall, never put somebody on a couch against the wall or somewhere that the shadow is going to fall onto um, the, what is directly behind them. So ideally when we're doing interviews, we want to use more than one light source. If you're using a window light, which is probably the easiest, look for a nice diffused light coming in through the window. That's going to be your primary or key light. And just use a, a whiteboard from the dollar store for a buck and a quarter, and you've got yourself a nice bounce situation. If you bring along a desk lamp, you can use that as the backlight, and you've got a fairly nice looking three-point lighting setup. Now, that works great during the day, but what do you do at night? So if you have access to a professional light, a nice soft box, something like that, you can use that as the main light, and you can use your white uh, reflector as the fill light and bounce the light in. And again, you're going to still use your, your desk lamp to uh, light up the back. Advanced lighting is primarily about looking at where you're shooting and then using your light sources creatively. If you're able to use more than one light source, you can usually improve the look of your interviews quite dramatically. And really, the lesson here is to start to apply that principle to your shooting. Don't just shoot one straight flat-on light. That's not really, really great. You want some shadows, and the way you do that is by using several light sources or offsetting the one light source a little bit off the camera. Now that we've completed the tutorial, let's check our learning with a quiz. So I hope that helps. Again, thanks for watching our tutorials. I'm Dr. Gary Gould, and we'll see you again.